What's going on YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here with CoreFX bringing you another pre-week market analysis video. This is the weekly analysis video that I do every weekend going over the technical analysis of the charts for the prior week and the week ahead to get you guys ready for the trading week coming ahead. Today is June 16th, 2018. It is Saturday. Getting you guys ready for the June 17th week of trading. We had a very exciting week last week, a lot of central bank meetings, um, a lot of movements in the Forex markets. So this week we should see a little bit more of some correction type moves, a little more pullbacks and uh, bear rallies and stuff like that after these strong moves last week. But for anyone new to these videos, I do dive into the indexes for each pair. I go over a little bit of the S&P 500, oil, gold, um, and then all the US dollar major crosses. I also dive into my watch list for the week, what pairs I will be watching for. I trade professionally uh, as a proprietary trader. And these just this just shows you the lists that I make, that I come up with of the pairs that I watch and how I develop a watch list for the week ahead. Uh, my returning viewers, thank you guys very much. I appreciate taking the time to watch these videos. I really do uh, value your guys' input. So any thoughts you guys have, good or bad, leave them in the comment section. And um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these. I hope you find value in them. And I will catch you on the charts. Thank you for stopping by. I'll see you in there. All right, so jumping into the charts here, starting with the indexes. This is going to be the basket of each currency individually instead of the pairs like we have with normal foreign currency transactions. It's usually one pair pitted up against the other. You're buying one and selling the other. This is the, um, really, it's the futures index chart. It's each individual currency on its own showing its relative performance versus a basket of other currencies. Um, so starting with the Dixie, the dollar index, this is the US dollar. As you guys know, we were in a downtrend, reversed the downtrend back in April, May, broke the trend line, broke the SMAs, set new higher highs, higher lows, and have now broke out of this uh, bearish pennant we're in, and now we have come up, set a higher high, we pulled back to right around above the 93 level, and then we pushed back up this Thursday, and we are retesting the prior high. This is under the 95 strong support resistance level, if you look left. Um, so although we had this big bullish uh, momentum candle on Thursday, we are hitting a strong zone. And if I pull up this RSI, you can see some divergence going on here on this level. So we're price action, we set a higher high, not breaking really the higher high, but it is higher and closing higher than the prior higher high. And as you can see on the RSI, um, relative strength index, it closed much lower. So this is a sign of divergence, you know, price is disagreeing with momentum. And um, we are starting to see, you know, just some diverging um, typically is a sign of correction, reversal, whatever you want to call it. So I am still bullish the dollar for sure, but I think we might have a little bit, at least a little bit of a correction before we break this higher high and continue this uptrend. But I do think this uptrend will continue. Euro is pretty much the exact opposite. The dollar and the euro are the most heavily traded pairs. The euro dollar is the most heavily traded pair. It makes up for like 60% of the Forex transactions. So these two charts are going to look pretty similar, but opposite. As you can see with this uptrend, then we have this bull pennant that we reversed, broke to the downside, set this downtrend. We've now broke lower here, rallied up for a lower high, pulled back down. Now we're retesting this low. Similar situation. I think we might get a little bit of a bounce, but I'm overall certainly looking to the downside in the euro, especially fundamentally. Draghi came out this week and um, really surprised the markets. Uh, added at least nine months from the end of their quantitative easing till they begin changing rates to the upside so um that was longer than expected we thought that maybe he could be hiking rates beginning right after the quantitative easing or shortly after but he pretty much came out and said nine months at least after um qe so this is like the s late summer of 2019 before they even think about it again just caught the markets off surprise a little bit more bearishness fundamentally for the euro and technically you can see we're bearish as well 50 crossed the 200 sma gave us this death cross this past week so uh, definitely technically bearish and fundamentally bearish so euro i will be looking for shorts just gotta wait for the right opportunity don't want to catch a falling knife trying to short here maybe wait for a little bit of a better bounce before we short or maybe a break below here before we short but i um, definitely looking for shorting opportunities and then on the yen it has moved lower but we're kind of chopping around in this little um area as you guys can see we said lower low lower high lower low came up broke the prior structure setting a higher high but have now come back down and looks like we're coming down to retest this low. This daily trend line is what's holding price as support right now. So we're going to look for a break of that. Also have this daily support um, horizontal level here. So keeping an eye on yen, I, I do still see a risk on market. Um, equities moving higher, so I do still see weakness to the yen. But 
really um, need some cleaner price action before we can too, be too set on that. Pound did exactly as we expected. We broke the uptrend, have been moving lower now, set this lower low, pulled back for a lower high. Thought we could at least have come down to retest this lower low this past week. That's what we did. Sitting on it now. These are the pairs I'm telling you guys that I think we might be seeing some pullbacks. Um, we're on support levels. We could see a break of these support levels, which would be great. Would give us some great opportunities to continue shorting these pairs, pound, euro, long dollar, stuff like that. But um, I do think we might get a little bit of a bounce at least before these pairs then continue lower again. Second half of this week is a little bit heavily loaded with news, so that is where we could expect to see the stronger moves. Maybe we get a bounce Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the trends continue Thursday, Friday. CAD, real strong sell-off. This is due to oil prices. Um, I can show you guys the oil chart here shortly, but you can see we've really broken all levels this past week. Um, we are in this choppiness that I was talking about for the past few weeks, and really until price came out of here, we weren't really looking for anything in particular. Um, this week we did break lower Thursday, Friday gapped even lower, broke lower. As you can see, this strong weekly trend line in blue we've broken. Um, we've broken support levels here at 76, and we've also broken this little um, demand zone here at around 75, 25 or so. Broken all these, so now what we can expect is a little pullback, retest, continue the downside. Definitely weak on the CAD overall. Oil looks to be reversing its uptrend and pulling to the downside. CAD is a very oil-based economy. Um, they rely heavily on their oil market, so anything that happens to the price of oil typically has a direct correlation to CAD's price. Supply and demand, when there's higher demand for oil, higher demand for CAD, vice versa. So they are strongly positively correlated and um, something we definitely want to be aware of. And I will be looking for shorts now in the CAD in the near future. Swiss franc, another pair that did exactly as we expected. Strong lower low, pulled back to set a lower high, came down, broke this counter trend line, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we kind of had this sell-off beginning. And uh, I do think that we can still fall down to 93.50. We might get a little bounce there and then maybe break to the downside more. But um, definitely still bearish this pair. Looking for more bearish price action than anything. But again, can't get too anchored to anyone belief. Got to wait and see what the market shows us. Aussie, another one did exactly what we thought as well. We've been moving lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher. We came up here and we're testing, reversing this trend. So we were worried that this breaking the 50 SMA, breaking structure, starting a new uptrend, but it did actually pull back. And then this week we shot down, broke this counter trend line, moved all the way back down to the lower low. Another perfect example of a pair that we do kind of see some potential correction in. This is a very strong and uh, parabolic move. Maybe we get a little price exhaustion, we get a little bounce here, and then price continues lower again and continues to push lower. Or maybe price comes down and we just get you know, some range bound price action before we continue lower, or even possibly we just straight reverse and bounce off and keep bouncing. Um, you know, you always got to keep the possibilities open, but the higher probability outcomes we want to be following. And that is where we see a little bit of exhaustion here. And then the trend continue to the downside, maybe down to the 7350 support demand zone down here. And then we have the New Zealand dollar, New Zealand dollar. Um, it doesn't have its own index chart. Uh, we can only pull up the futures charts here from Finviz, but if you check out the weekly chart here, this big weekly range is where I've been watching and telling you guys that we want to be watching. Um, it really just all through this area, you've seen through half of 2016 into 2017, all 2018 so far, you can see um, we've just been range bound in this price between 75 and 70 ish. Um, we had a strong push to the bottom of the range recently. Had a little bit of a bounce. I told you guys this is a very strong momentum push. We could finally see the support broken. This week we did end up closing with that bearish engulfing candle. You can see right there. Taking it to daily, you can see this pullback that we've been watching about the 382 level. Looking left, you see some strong structure support here. Then resistance came back up and has been respecting it. Looking left, it was support here, support here as well. Price had a lot of rejection widths to the upside. And then Thursday, Friday, we had that bearish momentum off. So I do see this pair at least going back down to here. Maybe then we see if it can break to the downside, break out of this weekly range, and this could end up being a very nice sell for the New Zealand dollar if that happens. Take us over to gold. As you guys can see here, this is something I've been calling for weeks. Um, I told you guys if we had a break out of this range, we could see it do something like that. And that is exactly what we are starting to see now. So we broke this strong trend line. We broke out of this range this past week 
while we broke this trend line. So I do think gold to the downside is uh, one of those things that we're watching for now. And if you look here, this 200 SMA and the 50 SMA, they are looking like they're going to cross soon. They haven't crossed in a while. When they did cross last, we had this strong sell-off when we had the death cross last. Um, so I do think that this could be a significant technical indicator as well. This death cross is 50 crossing below the 200. So I have to keep an eye on that. But gold bearish definitely um, at this moment, which corresponds with my risk on theme with you know equities moving higher. The safe haven assets like the yen, gold, things of that nature will um, appreciate typically. So that is what we're starting to see there. S&P 500, here's where you guys can see my risk on. We broke out of this pennant, as you guys know, we've been going over for a while. Broke out, then we were range bound, broke out again. Now we're a little bit range bound. We're not getting any strong, clean, nice exhaustion um, breaks to the upside, but we are still moving higher. I do think this market still has a lot of room to go. Nothing really showing that it's um, coming to an end. Yes, our business cycle says that we've been in one of the longest bull markets in history. Um, and all things and you know all bull markets turn into bear markets eventually um, and yes that is definitely inevitable but right now there are no clear signs that it's coming so all we can do is continue to ride the wave until these signs come and start to show us otherwise and this wave looks like it's still going to continue higher so S&P 500 US stock market index uh, overall looks bullish then you got oil this is that strong bull move that we saw uh, we've got weekly and daily zones in here, but as you guys can see, we were in a nice strong uptrend. We had a strong sell-off a few weeks ago, another strong sell-off, and we had another strong sell-off here. I think this will continue. We broke below $65 a barrel, um, and I, I really think we could go down and touch the $62 a barrel mark this week. If I bring this line down here, you guys can see where I'm talking about. Another zone price has responded to in the past. So I do think maybe we get a little bit of bounce and then price continues. This is where I see the pressure on the Canadian dollar could be weak. So another one we'll have to keep an eye on. Watch, but oil looks like it's reversing this uptrend. Broke the trend line, retested it, sold off hard. 20 cross below the 50, and we're just looking like uh, technically all across the board it's moving lower. All right, so this takes us over to the dollar crosses. As you guys can see here, I have a little um, risk to reward box up here. This is a trade taken last week. Um, but Euro was has reversed and is now in a downtrend as you guys know rallied up to retest resistance here on a fibonacci level also had some bearish engulfing candles in here price was trapped under this very strong resistance looking left it was the top of the shoulders in this head and shoulder pattern very strong zone back here and then um price did finally bounce off of that and shoot to the downside came all the way back up to this lower down to this lower low here so i am definitely still bearish this pair but again gotta wait and see what we do on this support level here, maybe we get a little bounce before we continue lower. This would be a good area to look to get back into the trade if we do get a nice bounce. Um, you know, up to around this area or so, we can get in a better price. Shorter risk to reward, ride it for the next push lower. But all in all, I do see the euro dollar um, as being more bearish than anything. We're in a downtrend. We're at support at lower lows, testing lower lows. So I do think we could set a new lower low this week, but probably not till the second half of the week. Same story really with pound dollar, um, similar kind of setup caught here too. When price came up to retest this uh, trend line area on this resistance, got this nice doji candle and then got some back to back bearish pressure off of it. We did shoot down back down to the um, bottom of the support on this uh, demand zone. And it's also a weekly level. If you look at this blue line, my blue lines mean weekly, my red lines mean daily. Um, but as you can see, we did come back down to this level. So another one where we got to wait and see if price is able to break lower. The way I kind of play these things out is either I wait for a good opportunity for it to rally, give me some kind of confirmation that it's ready to move lower, and then short, I have exact confirmations with my trade systems, but um, I look for confirmations there. Or maybe we look for this lower low to be made, pulls back to retest this broken support, now resistance structure, and then go short here with a better risk to ward and ride that lower. So a number of different ways you can play these setups, but right now we're kind of in a waiting phase for a lot of these plays to see how they play out. CAD dollar, um, it broke this strong weekly upward trend line, I mean up overhead trend line, which was acting as resistance. Strong daily levels we broke this week, and back to back, Thursday, Friday, very strong bullish moves. 
another pair that you know we're in a waiting phase we don't want to chase price we don't want to try to chase this strong bullish price action try to buy up here and then we get caught in a normal market correction lose all of our money and then it goes up higher the way we wanted it to go so what we do instead of chasing is we wait we wait for a pullback to come back show us that price is now found support ready to go higher we get in here we have a stop here we have a target here and we ride this part of the wave back up if it ends up setting a new higher high being a strong push we get a huge winner if not we get a decent winner anyways um, so that is how we trade pullbacks we also can trade breakouts which means maybe somewhere in this range before it broke out we had some buy stops waiting for price to break it maybe it triggered you and you got long and caught this push up right so um, there's different ways of trading trend trades but I like waiting for this pullback to reassure us that um, price is ready to move higher and we're getting it at a much more discounted price so that's what we're waiting for the CAD here waiting for a pullback on the dollar CAD get back to a nice level get long and then ride it on the next push higher dollar yen not really um, too excited about this pair hasn't really been the best price action we're coming up near resistance so until we get a break and maybe retest of this I'm um, not really looking to trade. I'm not going to be looking to short off of this resistance. I'm not a counter trend trader, and that is counter trend. So ultimately, in the dollar yen, I'm, I'm just waiting for a break to the upside, get in maybe on a pullback, and uh, catch the next move to the upside. Dollar Swiss franc, uh, another one that's been a little tricky. We're in a strong uptrend, had a pretty long pullback. We were testing the 50 SMA. I told you guys last week we could push higher, and we did. If you look on the four hour, you can see a little bit better where we did with this counter trend line here. We broke that um, this past week and pushed higher with that strong dollar on Thursday. So we are now continuing this uptrend. And again, we're gonna be coming up to this strong resistance and parity level at the dollar even with the Euro, I mean with the dollar Swiss franc. So really just gotta wait and see for an opportunity to present itself. Maybe we break higher, pull back, and then we get in. Um, but yeah, another pair that we'll be keeping an eye on, but nothing immediately to jump on. Aussie dollar, another beautiful setup. We're moving lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Thought we could have broken the trend, but we are also retesting this broken weekly trend line. So kind of in an indecision phase here, and then it broke out. Broke out of this um, bearish flag pattern as well, and has now moved down to this demand and support zone. So another one here where we are in a strong level after a strong move. Don't want to chase this, so maybe we wait for a little bit of a rally up to around 75. Get in a, you know, find an area where we found resistance get some kind of confirmations in your plan um, that you're ready to move lower and then you try to catch the next phase lower. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, kind of similar story, but still in that um, you know phase where we haven't fully broken out of this pattern yet. So um, you could be playing this break of this counter trend line and riding it down to here somewheres or down to this weekly level a little bit lower than this prior low, but um, I'm not chasing that either right now. I, I want and trade kind of cleaner setups than that but you could you know wait for this break retest something like that could be a play or you could just play if markets break down lower now um, however you play um, just make sure you have a set strategy and develop it around these trending moves and there are definitely some opportunities to be caught this week starting with my watch list first we've got the euro yen um, so this one you guys know I've been watching we've been in this trend channel broke below this very strong level around 129.50 made this strong lower low shot up pretty hard I've been watching for shorts in this range we did start to break up and out last Wednesday but then we did find this 50 SMA find this upward trend line here and uh, we did have this very strong bearish engulfing push lower so now I will be looking for opportunities to continue riding this down to around 126 we got a few hundred pips in here to make so definitely want to be watching this pair definitely seeing some bearish pressure um, we could see a strong yen, which is what we really need for this pair to really play out, but also uh, weak euro is a play that I like, and uh, we'll continue to look for opportunities in. Swiss franc, Japanese yen as well. This one is in the opposite direction. This one is if we see a weak yen and a strong Swiss franc. We have a Swiss franc central bank meeting this week, so definitely something we want to be uh, keeping an eye on and seeing what we have developing. But just to give you guys a little idea, we have a sloppy but still a, a case for argument for an inverse head and shoulders here right which would mean we are sitting right on the neckline of this inverse head and shoulders which is right at this 112 psychological resistance number it's also if you look left a pretty significant level so one thing I'll be watching which again isn't an immediate trade to jump into this week 
would be if this pair can maybe come up and break out and retest. Could be a nice opportunity. Or even if we pull back a little more and maybe we get on this trend line here a daily, say, hammer candle, you know, and we get a rejection wick off this. We show that this trend line's holding. It's right on the 50 SMA, right on this prior pullback zone. That could be a good opportunity to get in on a pullback here to catch us to the upside. But I do think that this pair reversing this trend here could turn into a nice long in this area here to ride up to around the 113.50 level and try to catch some pips in this zone. Uh, pound yen, another pair I've been watching. Uh, if you guys follow me on any of my social media, Instagram, anything like that, you've seen me watching this pair. Uh, we've been in this downtrend, lower low, lower high, lower low, pull back for this lower high. We're now in this little range bound area here, but we are on the trend line. We are on a little bit of a fib level as well. You take it from this full move down, you see we're at the 382, and then from the last impulse leg, we're a little more aggressive into the 618. Um, so we have pulled back into this strong resistance level looking left. We're in a box now, we're in a basing pattern. So I would like to see a break of that pattern, you know, break of down here, broken counter trend lines. So um, definitely looking to short this pair this week. I do like the pound to the downside as well. We've got on the four hour here, this uh, break of the trend line, a little bit of a base. We could catch this break to the downside further. We've got the 20 cross and the 50 SMAs here. Uh, really just a nice setup across the board on this pound yen pair bullish engulf I mean bearish engulfing past Thursday shows us some more pressure into the markets Friday was a little bit of a dull day that's where we got a little bit of a pullback here so now I think we are ready to continue the downside we have a nice downside target of around 145 down here um, for initial target and then we could move even lower to 144 and beyond so pound yen definitely a nice pair I want to be watching for this week coming up pound cad interesting pair I was watching this short as a lot of you guys know probably um, I was watching this pullback to short it in here with this bearish engulfing price just range bound all week though And then Friday did end up breaking out off that weak CAD So this is a play if the CAD remains weak, but the pound bounces off that support and becomes strong We could see a play here. We're breaking the 50 SMA So this could be one of those opportunities where we catch an early trend reversal So maybe we start the week like this pull back catch a long here. Maybe this becomes 50 SMA support we catch the long here off of this broken structure, pull back, bounce, and ride it for the next push higher. Um, that also could be the other way around. This 50 SMA could hold here, and this resistance could hold here, and then this could pull back down and move around. But um, just got to keep our cards open and our options open. We had a little bit of a cup and shoulder, I mean a cup and handle pattern here. We got a cup. The handle formed here after this um, basing pattern here and then broke out. So... Really all around, we have uh, some mixed, mixed, mixed stuff going on. But, you know, we want to be ready to play it. And I think if this breaks to the upside and then pulls back, that could be a great opportunity to go long, especially if we see some pound strength. Euro CAD, another one. I liked this pair a lot. I was short it last week. Um, a lot of my chat rooms and students and stuff were in as well and knew about it as well. Um, I really did like this setup. We were in this downtrend, pulled back to a strong level, like with pound yen. And we did break this counter trend line, broke off it, we broke out, got a nice strong move, but then we quickly reversed off that CAD weakness, unfortunately, from the oil. Uh, if that didn't happen, this most likely would have continued to the downside off that Euro weakness from the Draghi meeting in the middle of the week. Uh, most likely would have continued lower and been a nice trade. Instead, we got a little bit of a win and then the rest of the position got taken out at the break even. But... Um, Still watching this pair because as long as it remains under this resistance, this broken and retested weekly trend line, this bullish candle here could have just been an initial CAD bounce um, uh, drop, I mean, off that oil. So that could fade and this could continue the downside. CAD could shrug it off this week. Um, but again, just something we're going to have to take one step at a time with these markets and see what happens, what develops this week. And then we have Euro Swiss Franc, another short that I really like. Um, this is a live trade. We are, broke this uptrend in a downtrend, came down, set a lower low, rallied back up to this resistance. Price stalled at this resistance, throwing Fibonacci out here. You can see we are at the 318 from this strong move down to here. We are at the 318 level, very nice Fibonacci level. This 200 SMA overhead has held as well. We got a nice bearish engulfing candle on the daily last Thursday. Very good sign. Yes, we had a bullish bounce on Friday. But from all my testing I've done in over the years and all the trading I've done, I know that 
when there is an engulfing candle, about 70% of the time that candle retraces at least 40%. So retracing of these engulfing candles is totally normal. It actually offers a great opportunity to get in at a better price instead of entering after the close of the candle. You can get it at better prices. So this is a live trade I'll be watching for. Watching it on these lower time frames, you can see it even nicer. Um, we broke this counter trend line. You can see where this overhead supply and resistance level held very strong. If you take a look here, we do have a triple top on this four hour chart. One, two, three failed attempts to break that level. And then the last failed attempt on the third try, you can see that very strong bearish bounce off of it. So uh, definitely a pair I'm watching. Definitely a trade that you guys, um, this isn't a recommendation to trade. This is only me sharing my opinion. So this is in no way a recommendation for you guys to trade. But if you were to run it through your own risk parameters and your own trading plan, this is a great setup, I think, for this week. And then finally, um, the last few pairs we've got here, Aussie CAD. Another one I like looking for a long opportunity on this pair. So as you guys can see in this area, this is a strong zone in here where prices responded looking left multiple times all throughout the past. We've been in an uptrend, 20 crossed above the 50. Price is trading above the 20 and the 50. We did break above the 200, came back, broke it temporarily, but then broke back above it. We're retesting this trend line. Um, not going to jump into a long yet. Definitely need confirmation. You can use maybe counter trend lines on lower time frames or so for some confirmations. But um, all in all, I do think this pair is potentially ready to continue to the upside. Look for some opportunities here earlier in the week to confirm that maybe some bullish engulfing hammer candles some kind of candle pattern here to then go to the down, the lower time frames and look for that long opportunity and then new zealand cad cad swiss frank just plays on the weak cad um, we are seeing some breakouts here in some pairs that were kind of choppy and not really doing too much this breaks out pulls back could be a good opportunity to go long as we're in an uptrend now and we're getting these moving averages all crossing over each other CAD, Swiss franc, the yeah, same thing, but the opposite. You know, we're on a strong support level. We've got the moving averages all crossing each other, moving lower, could get a lower low, pull back to lower high, short that thing, ride that to the downside. This is, again, playing if that weak CAD continues. All right, so that pretty much covers all these pairs for you here, guys. Went over all the dollar crosses, oil, gold, S&P 500, went over my watch list for the week some trades from last week. I hope you guys find some value in this video. I hope you guys find some kind of benefit from it. If you guys like it, please let me know. I love hearing from you guys. If you don't like it, please let me know as well. I'm always trying to improve. Constructive criticism is one of the best ways to, to improve. Throw some comments if you want to see some different things. Um, anything you guys want me to cover in particular, just throw it out there and I'll cover it. But I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. It takes a lot of time out of my life to make them for you, so I really hope some you, some of you guys are finding some value in them. But um, I appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you guys throughout the week. If you have anything, Corey at CoreFXTrading.com. Always feel free to reach out. CoreFXTrading.com is where my full course and trading plan is. Um, if you guys are interested, just reach out to me. Check out the website. And um, if not, I'll catch you guys next weekend in the next video. Have a great week. And I'll